How's it going there everyone? It's Mr. Zen over here bringing us a brand new Cheating Craft anime discussion and for today's anime guys we are going to be doing episode 7, 8, and 9 for today's anime guys because there was not that much going on throughout the episodes but I would say that the most of the bulk of the episodes that I would say the most entertaining one I would say is the latest episode, episode 9 because you could say 7 and 8 are actually finally followed an actual plot line that actually was very relevant to the whole lore of the entire series which I thought was actually interesting due to the fact that, that those two episodes actually could have been put together as one episode because the way that they actually introduced those episodes it, it actually made logic there was a lot of logic in episode granted though some of the stuff that was actually involved within those two episodes it was mostly meant for just being gags and just making people all the viewers just laugh at the actual gags that were involved in it but other than that I would say seven to eight was just having a little bit more story and exposition on the character Mu Mei. But 9 itself, like I said, that one was just a pure battle oriented episode and I actually loved every single minute of that episode because of the fact that episode 9 was the fruits and labors of the hard work that Mumei had to endure through episode 7 and 8 and what he got and achieved was spectacular right there and then and I loved the way they actually did that episode. Granted, a lot of viewers didn't really like it but in honest opinion, I enjoyed it every every minute of it guys and honestly I actually did and I love the way the fact that Mumei's character was actually thrown on the side in those last two episodes 7 and 8 but in episode 9 I like the fact that his character went through a complete makeover which kind of brought the attention to the eyes if people are paying attention to the series that like I said in the, on the end it's a gag anime but you gotta look at it in a way that you know with the gags themselves it's just basically just making fun and making parodies off of shonen animes themselves it's kind of think of like Gintama but like a little di bit diminished but well taking exams that's the way I kind of see it that it kind of involves with every gag they kind of do they involve a lot of ep I would say anime from other series that kind of involve it in here and I feel like it's pretty interesting how they're kind of going with the gags themselves. But like I said though, episode 7 though, let's continue with that one. Now that one was actually more along the lines, I would say, as kind of explaining and I would say, I feel like that one was Ko-chan's actual episode right there. Because in the end right there, you know, of course, episode 6 involved Shu and Mumei apparently fighting, have a little bit of Yao Fest right there, but in all essence, that was all pure gags in itself. But episode 7 continue on and apparently Koi has, is seeing that Mu Mei has lost his confidence through the battle with Shu because apparently Shu obliterated Mu Mei. He didn't necessarily kill him. It seems more along the line that it just obliterated his confidence and that he just can't take tests anymore. He's just weak and in a pitiful state. So Koi has thought about it and said, you know what, we're going to go somewhere and we're going to go train you in order for you to become better and show you that you know that you can be a stronger person and I'm loving the fact that, that, that they actually did it that Koi was actually just be, she like she was making gags of herself as being her name her actual spy name was vitamin C and Mu Mei throughout the whole entire time was actually thinking like you're it's it's you Koi stop joking around and just say that it's you and I'm here thinking like it's probably just due to that reason that you know she was trying to shatter his uh, his I would say it's terms of reality right there and of course you know Mu Mei is just like looking at her like what the heck are you doing but apparently it just seems that you know like I said like every best friend does they try to uplift their cheerful thoughts like I said the anime seems to be more involved as like you're seeing the world through their eyes like in all essence like how I'm seeing the anime is probably like they're just taking a regular exam but the way that they're seeing the the way they take university exam is like with all those action oriented scenes that are involved that's why I feel like they're trying to make their lives more better due to that actual heavy stress like I said it loving the way that the anime is actually going along with that and it's hilarious the fact that they're kind of going with that because from episode 7 then moves on that it apparently goes on to a, I would say a, a parody off of training when shonen characters have to go train they have to I would say you could say it's kind of res he had to rescue Kochan because in the end of episode 7 it seems that Kochan got abducted by some random villain yes guys this random villain so he has to go through these trials in episode 8 to rescue and go rescue Kochan but apparently at the end of the episode Kochan was actually she wasn't in any danger it was more or less that she kind of orchestrated this event and actually for him I would say Mubei to actually learn new techniques and in the end 
Mumei in episode 8, he actually learned how to control fire. Now, that was actually pretty interesting. In episode, he learned how to control fire. But the ordeals and and, uh, he had to go through to learn how to go through fire was hilarious. The first trial, which I thought, okay, the entrance to the place. Granted, it it looked like the tower off of Pokemon. Off of, off of an Echo Cheek City with like the giant wooden tower. Like it just embodied that. Now there's an elevator inside it, but when they're going inside the elevator, they kind of give that shock value right there where you literally look down and you literally see that you're, you're, it's like a, a mirror, a mirror floor. And you're here wondering, like, what the heck is that meant for? But I'm assuming that's due to the fact that to make the character focus on what's at hand and not around him. Like, that was actually pretty, like I said, it's parroting other animes saying that, you know, like, you have to, like, it's basically, like I said, it's basically saying that Mumei has to know what's up ahead instead of just focusing on whatever's, everything that's chaotic that's going around him because of the fact that, you know, he's focusing on the bigger things when he actually be sure focusing on one single thing if you, if that's what he wants to be better at. Like I said, it's pretty, like, it was pretty hardcore right there in that actual scene itself. It was pretty philosophical too right there. But nonetheless, so it, the first trial that when it moves on from there, apparently he had to basically try to actually conquer his fear of that you know get his focus on from there on then he had to instead of his focus now he had to learn how to multitask and by multitasking i mean learning how to place chickens that were flammable and not flammable in boxes that were color coded for them so the chicken the ducks that were flame the that were not flammable they he put them in, in the, the pile side and the the chickens or playing ball, he puts him on another box. Like it, it's just weird. Like how they actually went along with that. Like I was just kind of dying of laughter due to the actual. Reason. I'm like, is this really training, or are they just making him just work just to keep his mind off the things? Like I said, it just they didn't really go overboard of the training scene, which I thought was pretty hilarious. But then from there, they went on to a sauna, or if I remember correctly, if that if the sauna was first, I, I kind of forgot. I kind of went through it in one go. I thought it was like the whole thing is just a, a hilarious gag right there. The sauna itself was just another yaoi action scene to keep viewers entertained and kind of give them this kind of reaction as to wonder like what the heck is going on because due to the fact that you see Koi actually even gets a, a bloody nose impl- implicating the fact that you know of course that was a pretty hot scene but us viewers are just wondering like what the heck is this really called training because all the males that were inside the sauna were actually giving themselves a body rub too. Mumei and Mumei was just kind of he was kind of getting hurt there for a second and I thought to myself now that's actually pretty weird and stuff but that's considered training but I'm assuming that's part more to the fact to get rid of all the stress in the sexual innuendo way that's the way it kind of seemed like to me in my honest opinion it was kind of weird but it was funny but a little bit weird in a way that they kind of went along with that <laughs> but then the last trial involved him actually going on to a high altitude place and get and learning how to actually manage you could you could say his time and how to actually coordinate the his abilities that he can like i said it's all this is actually training i love the fact they went along with that and it's hilarious to the fact that that he couldn't breathe and and while he's doing all this training the, the trainer himself was doing gags himself the guy was actually being like a like a service worker he was he was just just being a comical clown he he, like he had when he was training himself up there in the high altitude place he had oxygen for himself while mume had to train without oxygen i'm just here thinking like what the heck man like you're just looking at the at the fact that mume is training so hard and you're looking and you're here wondering like are we really here to see mume are we really here to see the the actual trainer itself but in the end of the in the end the trainer was actually mume's father which kind of didn't kind of was like a little plot hole right there due to the fact that i thought mume's father was in prison but apparently it seems that he wasn't in prison i was like okay kind of makes sense granted though then mume does learn fire and the minute that he learns fire after he was done with his training was so hilarious that it literally there was a scene that was literally involved that literally replicated Sanji's Diablo Ham Jambe. I was dying of laughter once that scene came out because of that fact that it literally looked like he was literally doing Diablo Hambe on his actual leg and even tacked his trainer with it too. And you a lot of you are gonna be wondering like, is that a gag now? Like I couldn't tell if that was really a gag or or if that really was just its own historical sense right there. Like I said, it, it's 
it was hard to tell that scene, but to me, it felt like it was like a tribute to Sanji Kun himself, because you know, apparently learning how to control fire with his own body through friction. Which, by the way, that kind of leads on after Mu Mei learns his training at Episode Eight. He gets a special pen from the Mu Mei, the Shokatsu family clan, actually. And basically, the pen involves bringing in together the fire and wind. You could say the styles put together and creates a powerful new technique. Now that was it because that involves itself onto episode nine, where Shokatsu Mumei actually then faces off against Shu in the final bit against themselves. And it seems that we actually learn more about Shu in this episode. It's the scene that he actually fights with strings. A lot of viewers we already kind of knew that, but for you know for Mumei he didn't really notice that. But it was hilarious the fact that when they were fighting, it was really a battle-oriented episode. And a lot of viewers were actually going to stick to that episode through to the end. Due to the fact that, you know, it was a lot of cliche shonen tropes where you see Shokatsu Mumei just yell out random attack names and win names. That, you could say that cocky little kid with with a, with huge-ass powers right there. And then you're just you're going to be laughing at that fact. But it's still entertaining, don't get me wrong. Episode 9 was entertaining and I did love the fact they were going with that. And it, the, by the way, episode 9 I believe was a tribute to Naruto itself because these two were like Sasuke and Naruto when they were fighting at, at a freaking water. Like legitly it reminded me of that. They were fighting near a waterfall. You know, one was using strings, which by the way, Shu's techniques kind of felt similar to Don Flamingo from One Piece. It literally had that kind of same vibe as he was a villain and Don Flamingo was a villain. Like I said, there were so much many gags that were involved that through the whole battle-oriented scenes, you couldn't really tell as to what was going on. Like I said, it's just hilarious. It's then freaking nerve-wracking. as like, hold on, there's so many little tiny, little tiny gags. You got to find them all. It's like... It's like hidden trophies throughout every single time they're trying to figure this out. But like I said though, it's good in all essence. Episode 9 was very, very well written out. Granted though, the only thing I did not like about it was the fact that the teacher itself that was involved with it was just another ruse in itself. Like I said, there was something along with some of the side characters that kind of didn't make any sense. But granted though, episode 9 was very, very good right there and then. But that's it for today's episode guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it because cheating craft is starting to become very interesting. You know, at first, from the first couple of episodes, it was it was okay, it was okay, mediocre. But now it's starting to get a little bit better. I'm hoping to see what more this anime actually has to offer, and I hope they actually they actually make this into a very serialized series and more into an actual lore involved, because that would actually be pretty interesting in a sense, because you know the animation quality that's involved with with this anime with cheating craft is actually su superb in my opinion i believe it's pretty good in my honest opinion but like i said let me know down in the comments below what you guys thoughts on episode 7 8 and 9 what did you think of all the gags that were involved with it what was your favorite gag like i said episode 9 seemed to be my favorite like it literally felt like a sasuke versus luffy fight right there and then it literally did just with paper versus strings literally it was pretty interesting like i said but like I said, and oh, and always guys, if you guys enjoy my content, give a like, comment, share, and subscribe for more Cheating Craft anime episode discussions. And if you guys don't want that, I have more anime that you guys can look up. Check out my playlist for the fall 2016 anime playlist, as I do other, I review actually other animes as well. And check it out when you guys have the time, of course. And as always guys, if you guys enjoy my content, have a wonderful day. But this is Mr. Zen, signing out.